Welcome to Chatting the Pictures. My name is Kara Finnegan, and I'm a writer, teacher, and historian of photography. And I'm Michael Shaw. I'm a writer, a psychologist, and also publisher of Reading the Pictures. Hurricane Ida left a path of destruction along the Gulf Coast, accented by the dark smoke from Louisiana's petrochemical Cancer Alley. This photo was taken by Chris Granger for the Times-Picayune and the New Orleans Advocate via the AP. It shows homes near Norco in St. Charles Parish, Louisiana, surrounded by floodwaters the morning after the Category 4 Hurricane Ida hit the Gulf Coast. Granger's capturing of the aerial view really shows us a lot. The image really collapses the space of the background and the foreground in ways that invite us to think about both the individual lives affected in this immediate sense by the storm and also the broader institutional and industrial context in which the storm played out. In terms of context, climate change is a major player in this story. Hurricane Ida jumped from a Category 1 to a Category 4 storm as it moved over abnormally hot water in the Gulf. The extra heat acted as fuel for the storm, which led to faster wind speeds, larger storm surges, and judging by the fewer photographs we saw of people boarding up houses and clogging freeways, it also leads to much less time to prepare and to evacuate. And in terms of industry, the Gulf Coast accounts for 94% of U.S. offshore oil production. The town of Norco was actually named after the refinery back in the 1920s. And so one of the things that this photo is really inviting us to think about is the long time power that industry has had in these communities, both to employ and also be a really ambivalent environmental presence. I see this in the image as I kind of toggle back and forth between the foreground and the background. And in doing this, it really reminded me of a 1930s Depression era photograph made by Walker Evans of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, an industry town, a mill town. And what he was trying to do there was he was trying to picture the interrelationships between the mill and the lives of the workers and in the foreground of that photo, the cemetery, where they would all inevitably end up. And this photo is echoing some of that attempt to kind of collapse these ideas into one place. So here in this picture, we're getting industry, we're getting home, we're getting the climate crisis and the threat of natural disasters that aren't, in fact, so natural. And we're really being asked as viewers to try to process all of this information in this one shot. Yeah, there's the historical resonance of the photograph. There's also the immediate visceral response that we have. There's a lot going on here that's more particular to St. Charles Parish. There were releases of crude oil, fuel oils, and a variety of chemicals into the air in Norco, including an unknown amount of hydrogen from that shell plant, which is in the background of the photograph. And that occurred when those flares you're seeing right now were extinguished by Ida's winds on Sunday. And a few things about flaring. It's when excess gases are combined with steam or air, and that gas is burned off. It's purported to be safe, but it leads to flaring off of excess toxic gases. Julie Dermansky of Desmog.com took these photos from Norco of the town and the flaring. She adds that these flares are typically white or gray, but not black. And the black carbon released by flares can also be a powerful greenhouse gas in its own right. Local residents said they had never seen this many flares before. So bottom line, this photograph, which seems generic in the representation of environmental fallout, is certainly far from it. 